Can't wait to hear your new music, man. It's, I'm curious. Sounds like uh, I'll give you this. Oh. Sounds like you guys seen uh, Return of the Jedi. Mm -hmm. You know the Ewok village. Yep. Oh yes. Sounds like that. I'm Vicky Farewell, and this is Enemy Friends Like These. Hi, my name is Mac DeMarco. This is Friends Like These. I remember uh, I was in, I have a little studio. It's a converted garage in my backyard of my house in LA. And um, a mutual friend of me and Vicky's Kelsey was over, or he came over. I don't know. I don't know what we were doing there. I think we were just messing around. There's a lot of times where we just mess around there, but he brought Vicky. Um, and I met her and she started playing, I think, the CS60. And I was like, oh, you're pretty good at that. So yeah. So and then we I think we made we were recording something. I don't know. General, I think there were a couple of beers floating around. Um, but that was the initial meeting. I'm pretty sure, unless I'm mistaken, Vic, but I think that's when it was in the garage. No, you're right. That was definitely it. Um, I I had just flown, I had touched, I had touched down at the airport from tour. And uh I got Kelsey's text, hey, we're at Mac tomorrow's house. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And just pulled up and that was it. Yeah. But yeah, we I think we were just jamming, like one of those like jam sessions where you were like playing engineer. You know? Well, yeah, because when I met all of you guys. I, I I wasn't a good musician anymore, so I just I tend to not play. I let you guys do the playing. And I just why isn't back. he Why isn't he playing? I thought that was weird, but because I, I can't like, keep oh, up. Yeah, I can't. That's keep not up. true. Oh, oh yeah. You, I think you like playing engineer producer guy. I, I have a bunch cool. of toys in there. Sometimes it's nice to have people to right do the yeah. work, and then I can just play with the toys. But right. <laughs> So Vicky, what is it like working with me? Just extremely fun and laid back. Super fun, laid back. Okay. Yep. I enjoy it. It's fun. We don't do it enough. You like to uh, do your own thing, which is which is cool. Occasionally, you invite us, and we have like a whole party and record whatever. Oh, are we talking about musically or like working on the label side? Is that what oh, we're? Oh yeah. What are we talking? About? I hope that's fine too. Oh, hell yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> it's been super fun. Okay, I mean, good, co good, good. COVID kind of killed like a huge portion of it. But um, but then when things started lifting, like, yeah, it's great. And we're going for it. Uh -huh. Written music together. I mean, I would say, yeah. I, I don't know, you know, not like um, quill to parchment kind of like, ah, uh, yes. And then. And then we'll bring in the C shop minor. You know, it's not like that, I don't think. But uh, but you know, like I was, we were saying before. You know, Vicky comes through the place a lot, um, and you know, either it'll be a jam or or maybe you know, she. I remember Vic, you and Kels came through and did a, a pass on one of the songs on my last record. Didn't end. Up, I didn't end up using that arrangement of it. But you know, in that instance as well, like that kind of. Um, yeah, we did. Dude. We we did work on something together. Which one? Oh, with uh, Breeze Machine. We did. We made, uh, what's the song called? When Winter Comes, Paul McCartney. That's right. Remix. The remix with Anderson yeah. Pack. We did that. We recorded with him for the Paul McCartney remix album. That's right. Yep. That was I guess that's pretty official. That's pretty official. That was yeah. our most official one, I would say. Yeah, I would say. The rest is kind of late night, uh, slow jam kind of style, you know. Right. Well, some funky stuff. I don't know. Yep. Yeah. No. I mean, even those are fun. Yeah, they're the, great. Like, it's great. It's the ones great. that you just have on your hard drive lying somewhere. That's right. But, the vault. Yeah, the, yeah. McCartney, the McCartney remix is definitely the, the official one. Mac, what motivates you as a musician? This is a complicated question. Very complicated. What does motivate me? Hmm. I think it all has to come back down to I love to do it. But even though I love to do it, sometimes it's a pain. So there's a lot of people breathing down your neck. When you start making money doing something like this, there's even more people breathing down your neck. Sometimes you hate it. Sometimes you don't want to do it. 
but I still do love doing it and I have been doing it over the years. I think that, you know, maybe my, I refuse to show some of those people what I make more often now. And I try to keep it as pure as I can because I love the music part. I hate pretty much everything else surrounding it. <laughs> and now I ask Vicky the same thing. Vicky, yeah. what inspires you to make the rock music that you make? I honestly, I think it's uh, myself because I was so unhappy with music for so long. Um, you know, you, you get little moments of like um, happiness. It's like when you win your first award, like, oh, this is great. And then it goes away. Mm -hmm. And then you're just back to like feeling empty inside <laughs> musically. And for me, I didn't come out as an artist until recently, you know, when, when you came along. But now I'm, I'm just at the beginning. So I don't know, maybe I'll eventually reach to the point where you, you got, you know. No, 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 it's good. It's good. It's good. I still am having a great time. Don't get me wrong. I, yeah, I agree with you, though, though. There is like a, there's like a dopamine hit. You record something and you're like, you're like oh, I like, oh, I like that. Because I, I still have these memories of some of my songs from years ago when I recorded them. And I was like, you know, and it's almost like uh, being addicted to smoking or, or something or, or heroin, I guess. I, I've never done heroin, but something like that, where it's like you're always chasing that that initial, wow. You hear it come off the speakers. You're like, wow, that feels good. You know, something like yeah. that. I don't know. Maybe that, I just have a, a addictive personality. I don't know. That's there for me, too. That's there for mm -hmm. me, too, especially when I record like a good hook or something. And I'm like, yes, that's the one. That's it. It feels right. But, I think you, you probably yeah. agree too. I was thinking about the other day. It's like, I don't know how to do anything else. And you are a much, you know, you have much more of a, a, a you're I a lot. I really don't know how to do anything. I just know how to play piano. That's the, I've never had a job outside of that before. But see, so but this, there's, but the, well, that's what I'm saying. So this is kind of like, this is what we do. It's hard to be asked why we do it. Cause this is just what we do. You know what I mean? So Vic, um, how was it? What was it like recording the record, the Sweet Company record? Well, it was awesome. It was the best I had time in my life. I think I would say I was the happiest I'd ever been in my entire life making this record. Okay. Yeah. And did I it all forever, on your own? I will forever chase that high. Yes. <laughs> you, you did it. You did it all on your own. I'm right, I yeah. did. Um, I had my roommate Brad play guitar on on Sweet Company, the track, and because uh, I can't play guitar. And then I had my friend James Rishizawa do like some light percussion stuff on a couple songs. Um, but everything else, yeah, completely self written, produced, engineered, all of that. Um, <clears throat> and it was a journey because I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. And uh, in time, I just got better and better. Like I remember texting you, asking you questions about things and then, and asking Breton too, just like random homies of mine that, you know, were way more skilled than I was and just kind of grew really fast because like, I think I just had like a musical, like a creative spark going on and it just kept growing. Yeah. And then, and then that was it. I was like, wow, I didn't think this day would ever come. <laughs> isn't that, I've been, isn't... I've been waiting for this. That's why I'm just like, wow you know, that's the greatest thing that's the greatest part of it where you're like how, why how did that happen why did that happen because i've had the same thing in a couple instances where like a record will come out real quick and you're like like what it feels like it's not yours almost sometimes you know you're like what is going on here i don't even where did this I, come from right i don't even recognize myself at times so I'm like, yeah I but can't it's believe great I wrote that. Yeah. see that's another one of those things that i'm just chasing after Eternally. <laughs> yeah, me too. Hell yeah, you and me both, man. Yeah. Mac, what are you currently working on? I'm working on a record. I'm in New York. Shit. Am I working on it in New York? Maybe a little bit. Some. Just in New York? No, nah, I don't think so. But I'm here now. We got a show on Wednesday. But here's the thing. I may be out and I may be working on a record. And I maybe here's the thing. I've been in New York. I've been driving around a couple months here working on so, you know, this so-called record here. But I think what I'm mainly working on is living a happy life. And it's working. 
And I think that, uh, yeah, that's a good answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember you telling me recently, like called on the phone, you said you were in a place where you're very happy. Yeah, but I'm also going insane. But it's all about the oh, enrichment, yeah. the enrichment of the human life and the, uh, the excitement and the bottling of that and the, <laughs> and the, uh, the cultivation of that. And the, uh, yeah, I'm learning how yeah. to, uh, I'm, I'm reteaching myself how to rock and roll. <laughs> oh, okay. You're, so yeah. you're like. But in my I'm life, learning. you know, in my life. Got it. Yeah, Got it. excitement, you know. Well, I'm happy, excited, and um, hopeful for you. Yeah, and thank you. Can we hear your new music, man? <laughs> I'm curious. Sounds like, uh, I'll give you this. Oh. Sounds like, you guys seen uh, Return of the Jedi? Mm-hmm. You know, the Ewok village? Yep. Oh, yes. Sounds like that. Oh, wait. Oh, uh, that's awesome. I would I'm like glad. to think. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it already. Yeah. Vicky, I would say probably my favorite track of yours would be maybe, maybe it's Kakashi. I think I like the whole record a lot, but I think mm, might be Kakashi. Hey. So what's your favorite track of mine? <laughs> can you can you tell me why? I don't I remember you know what you didn't send me that one off the bat. You sent me Are We Okay? Mm -hmm. And that one I really like as well. But then Breton came over and he was like, Yo, I'm remixing this other song that Vicky sent me. I was like, She sent you another song. What are you talking about? And he played me Kakashi, and I was like, "Oh, damn! I don't know what it, I don't know. I just, just well, I, I don't know. I like the whole here's the whole the thing. He sent you his remix of it, so he didn't send you the original. No, but he had, but he had the original too. I think, and he played it for me, oh, and I was like, mm. he A and B'd it. Wow. But then I think, uh, yeah, and I was like, I see, because I I don't know if right off the bat you had told me that there were a collection of them, and I was like, ah, now I see. Right. There's more than one. Um, what do I like about it? It's catchy. The synth sounds are good. The melody is good. I like the song. It's good. I don't know. It's a good, it's good music. It's a good song. Thank you. Yeah. Well, my favorite song of yours is going to have to be Watching Him Fade Away. Ah, yeah. okay. I'll take that. And I know the, it's a it's a, a bit of a sadder song a little on bit. the sadder side. Sure. Uh, but it's it I had listened to your record at the time it was new. Uh, is it this old dog? Yep. Yeah. And at the time it was new and we hadn't met yet, obviously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think you were uh touring with the guys. Probably. Uh, or like around that time. That was when we were all oh, who's this Mac DeMarc? You know, yeah. like your, your name was coming around everywhere. And, yeah. and uh, I would listen to that record and that I think it's the last track of your Indeed it album. is. Yeah. And uh, I think I was parked somewhere, grocery shopping or something. And then I like was going to get out of my car, but that song came on and you, you know, and it just like, like enveloped me in so I stayed in my car for the whole duration of the song All and right. of course you know I like got emotional <laughs> uh but <laughs> I mean I because like I we have like a similar you know dad yeah daddy daddy complex okay yeah, daddy issues I'm just gonna say it okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. so very similar now you know yeah. very extremely similar now so yeah, yeah that was you know, sealed the deal for me well god okay. bless God bless, yeah. God bless all the people out there with the daddy issues. And thank you, Vic. Yep. Hey, Mac, here's a loaded question. Who's your favorite artist of all time? <laughs> <laughs> I would say right now, I'm going to say Lou Reed right now. <laughs> I can't stop with the guy. It's a, it's a tie, though, between him and Elise Regina, I think. Nice. That's but Lou, I'm in New York, you know, I, I go outside for five minutes. I come back. I smell like dirty pennies. I'm just like, hell yeah, Lou. 
This is it. That smell. Yeah, I'm in New York. Everything's filthy. <laughs> it's awesome. But I love it. I don't know what it is. I, I, you know, but I'll tell you the other day I was listening to the original LCR mixes of uh, Elise Regina, the, the, the album called Elise. Oh my God. Yeah. Like, how does a human do that? I don't know. It's so good. Anyway, Vicky, how about you? Yeah. Favorite artist of all yeah. time? I can't with this question, but you know what? The best person right now in my life currently, I think that represents what I am right now is probably Miles Davis. I know that sounds. No, no. All G. No? Okay. Whatever. It is Miles Davis. Okay. Oh yeah. And I guess the reason is because uh, he, his career started at one point and ended at a completely different point. And just the like evolution of his musicianship and his musical career in general is kind of what I strive to be. You know, I started very extremely traditional classical to now mm-hmm. and like in between learning jazz and uh, improvisation and then now composing basically, which is like to me, composition is like the most freedom you can have as a as an artist and a writer is to be able to write and compose your own shit. So we'll see where it takes me after that. But yeah, that's what I kind of like about Miles. Is that he's always changing. He's the best, you know, what can you say? Where do we go in LA? Do we ever, have we ever gone to karaoke in LA? There's that one spot in K-Town, I think, right? We well, there's like several spots in K Town. But I'm thinking, did we go to that spot? No, we went to a Thai restaurant. Ah, somebody's birthday party. I think so. And yeah. you had invited me out randomly. Yeah, and like, this is Nick Hakim was funny. in town, I think, too. Yes, he was. <laughs> I met him there too. And uh, there was a yeah, someone's party, but it's, it's it was a Thai restaurant with karaoke and yeah which i so so, imagine picture this in your mind's eye we're at the thai spot again okay they call your name up to the karaoke mic what song do you choose i gotta go i gotta go for the one which is i can't go for that no oh hollow notes oh yeah i would go in so hard on that huge i would have huge hit of the 80s i can't go for that Daryl Hall and John Oates. Oh, yeah. Nice. That's my go-to. I already know yours. I'm not going to say it. No, do it. You, Let's see. Let's you see. Sang, you sang it that night. And then you also sang it another time when, like, we were, like, uh, hanging out backstage somewhere. Someone else show, not yours. Uh, mm. And they had a piano backstage. And you're like, do you know? Yeah, okay. what is it? Come on. Give it to us. Oh shit! Oh shit! What was it? It's oh, a Billy, it's, it's a Billy ah, Joel song. Ah, yes, just the way you are, Billy Joel. Yeah. But that- you know, I'll I'll tell you the truth about this. I've been singing this song at karaoke for a long time, but it's not truly. I mean, I love this song, but it's. I always sang it. My friend Ryan, my friend Ryan Boyce. Uh, never. I mean, he's played in iterations of my band make, make over a decade ago when no one gave a shit who I was but uh it was it was truly his karaoke song and I kind of stole it from him and I've I've, I've never said this and Ryan I'm sorry I took this song from you but I mean I guess we both took it from Billy but uh, no I do do that song all the time you know it's interesting though sometimes I think I don't know there's some places where I want it to hit I want you know people do like fun karaoke songs it's not it's not a fun karaoke song and the one thing I hate the most is when you know especially when you're hanging out with musicians and you go to karaoke and somebody's kind of like, check out what I can do. It's like, give me a break. Just, we're trying to have fun here. So I feel yeah. like I need to find another fun, more fun. Because I used to do that or I would do Yellow Brick just, Road by Elton John, which is like, these are not fun. I mean, they're fun. No, I love Sinatra. that. I'll tell you this. Though. I was at this place in Edmonton last uh, a couple months ago when I was seeing my family. And I, I went up to do... Uh, what song did I do? Uh, you Make Me Feel So Young by Frank Sinatra. I like that song, but I'll tell you, I was up there 
the karaoke track was in the wrong key. Oh, it was a mess. <laughs> was it like higher range? It was lower or something, I think. And I couldn't, you know, it just wasn't right. I was expecting the normal key. Oh my God, it was a disgrace. That's the biggest embarrassment. Mad hometown Marco. karaoke i'm a professional musician and i go up and just absolutely butcher it oh my god but see even frank that's not like super that's people aren't like oh sometimes you know like like maybe like uh, shania twain or something that'll get the place going crazy you know what i mean but uh right. i don't know anyway karaoke the politics of karaoke mac what was your first show like? I was probably 16 in Edmonton. I had a little joke band called the Meat Cleavers, I think. <laughs> we played We played at a uh, skate park. We opened for a band called the Secretaries. Um, and I just sent a MySpace message to a promoter in town. I was like, give us a fucking show, like kind of as a joke. And he was like, sure, I'd love to. And I was like, uh-oh. Um, and we went and I was terrified. There's probably only five of my friends watching us and we did the show and that was, that was it, I guess. Yeah. And then uh, probably like six songs and, but it felt good. It was exciting, even oh, though it yeah. was ridiculous, but yeah, that was it. 2005 or six. Were you singing? Ago. I was, I'm playing guitar. And Vicky, I your first show experience? I don't know. I can't remember because uh, I I had studied classical piano. So does a piano recital count as a show? I guess. Yeah, I would say. I mean, I didn't okay. have anything like that. So I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say that was like my first like performance, you know, live performance where there was an audience. So I was probably like seven or eight or nine, one of those. And just, you know playing piano it was scary I mean yeah. what kid goes on stage and like yeah I got this you know uh, but <laughs> but I killed it and you know, <laughs> fucking killed and murdered hell yeah Vicky the people are dying to know what is the most common misconception that people have about Vicky the most common misconception is would have to be that I am shy and quiet. I get that all the time. I've had it my whole life. And yeah, I guess to a certain extent I, I can be, but like, as you get to know me, it's, I'm like the opposite of that. Yeah, I would, I would agree with you on, on I'm that. Like You're loud. not very shy, not very quiet. I'm loud. I, I definitely have moments where I will bark back. <laughs> I True. definitely have moments of just being, you know, more than straightforward, I guess. Um, but that's because I care and I love you. And that's why I do those things. But uh, <laughs> but I would say that's the biggest one. And yeah. yeah Mark. Yes. Uh, what is the biggest misconception that you, ha that you have? I think it's it's been this for many years now. I think it's the same today. Uh, people think that I love to smoke weed. I've and never, I, ever seen you smoke any kind of weed. It's because I've never really smoked weed. And I'll tell you why. Because weed is for hippies. And I'm not a hippie. Thank you. Thank you.